leading with Amoongus and Fluttermane. Ogre Pawn and Ursaluna leads over for Donghoon's side of the field. Fluttermane's Protosynthesis will active because that booster energy will be a special attack boost here. So this Fluttermane trying to get as much damage out as possible to start off this battle. Yeah, so two more offensive Fluttermanes. Uh, right now, though, Dunkmoon's not on the field in the match. Instead, it's the Blood Moon next to the Ogre One. Both players leading a big damaging special attacker next to a possible redirection. Um, the Ogre Pun could also just go on the offense against this Fluttermane. Doesn't have to worry about getting Rage Powdered. Uh, the Amoongus looking... Uh, like, it might be an okay spot here, but you have to imagine a life or boosted Blood Moon is not what Amoongus wants to take either. And Amoongus likely intended to be slower than Blood Moon, which means that outside of this trick room, actually, that works in Blood Moon's favor. Ogre Pond on Dong, whose side will Spiky Shield does not want to take damage from this Fluttermane right now, but it looks like Ursaluna will also protect right here, just trying to see what Wolf is going to be doing this turn with these two Pokemon. Fluttermane will go for Dazzling Gleam, a little bit of spread damage onto both Pokemon, and when I say a little, I mean it still hurts a lot into these two neutral targets as both Pokemon protect. Amoongus will opt for Spore here, will just land into that first Luna slot. So a little bit of knowledge here for Dong to try to figure out what Wolf's game plan was going into turn one. Yeah, it's not like any terrestrializations were committed or choice items were locked into. It is just kind of learning what Wolf's mindset is in this game. Looks for the Spore into Blood Moon, tries to just kind of gently spread damage. Isn't too protective of the Fluttermane. Maybe that's a sign he's willing to let it go down if that's a trade for a reasonable Dazzling Gleam. Um, and that's where all pieces of information that Darkmoon can take and use to formulate a game plan for this turn. But also Wolf is just free to completely change it up. Nothing about that turn committed any resources or forced Wolf's hand for the next turn. Earth Luna forced to switch out. It will be the Incineroar to take uh, the place of that Earth Luna on Darkmoon's side. So. Uh, Incineroar's Intimidate, not gonna matter at all against this Amoongus, and the Fluttermane will be able to provide fake-out support, maybe possibly flinch that Amoongus next turn, as here's a Dazzling Gleam connects into the Ogre Pond and the Incineroar, and here's a Retaliating Ivy Cudgel into the Fluttermane, but Fluttermane hangs on on Wolf's side, and here's the Sludge Bomb hitting in that Ogre Pond, and Ogre Pond hangs on too! Yeah, so Wolf does just get the spread. Dazzling Gleam gets pretty reasonable damage. Uh, doesn't go for the Spore into what would have still landed into the Incineroar that's holding Kira Amulet, um, but instead gets a Sludge Bomb into the Ogre Pond. Uh, and both players get a lot of damage down, but probably neither gets the KO they want to go for. The Ogre Pond couldn't commit the Water Trastalization there that would have both helped take less damage from Dazzling Gleam and Sludge Bomb, but also actually get the KO on Fluttermane because it would have opened up the possibility for redirection with Rage Pond, which instead just stayed as a Grass type. Ogre Pond spiking shields here as as Amoongus will try to protect the Fluttermane by drawing away attacks with that Rage Powder here as Fluttermane content to just go for more Dazzling Gleams. Will not be able to get the KO on Ogre Pond because it does protect itself here as Fluttermane connects into Incineroar. Incineroar has taken so much damage right now, but Incineroar just going for a Flare Blitz into that Amoongus. Big damage will take Recoil here and knock itself out from that range. So, uh, you know, Incineroar comes in, drops one Flare Blitz, heavily weakens Amoongus, but has to pay the price there as Amoongus will just heal off all of that, uh, a lot of that damage back with that Citrus Berry. Yeah, pretty safe turn for Wolf. What can happen in that turn is pretty constrained. That accepts that the Flare Blitz lands into Amoongus, but it means that Fluttermane was staying safe. Fluttermane's Dazzling Gleam moving before Ogre Pond on the other side really meant that Ogre Pond couldn't take any action in that turn except to protect itself. And, and er, the Incineroar goes down from the combination of Dazzling Gleam and uh, the Flare Blitz recoil. Now you can freely just go for a Dazzling Gleam again on this turn, and either the Ogre Pond's going to have to take it or switch out, and something else is going to take that Dazzling Gleam. So Wolf can continue to get pretty safe damage and put himself up. He's dealt so much more total damage in this match than Dong Hoon has so far. Furgraph will replace the heavily damaged Ogre Pond. Amoongus on Wolf's side protects itself, does not want to take any attacks from this Ursaluna. As Fluttermane, again, content to just go for Dazzling Gleams, does a lot of chip, like, it's not even chip damage, that's a lot of damage into that Ursaluna slot, as Ursaluna will go for a Hyper Voice. Because of that ability, because of the Mind's Eye, is able to connect into that Fluttermane and get the KO from that range. So Ursaluna will take some damage from that Life Orb, but, you know, First Luna took a lot of damage from that Dazzling Gleam. Yeah, it did. I mean, I think Wolf has spent the Fluttermane in a way that clearly he wanted to use it. Uh, got it on the field, was not very protective of it, let it take an IV Cudgel, let it eventually go down to a Hyper Voice, but used it to just spread damage around with the team. The uh, Incineroar is gone. The Ogre Pond is at very low health. The Frigraph and the uh, Ursa Luna have both been chunked down to over 50%, and all Wolf's really spent for that is the entire Fluttermane and a chunk of 
among us is health bar, and there's still two unrevealed Pokemon ready to come in, and Urshifu is the perfect one to just come in and put a ton of pressure on this. You don't even necessarily have to risk walking into Surging Strikes to go after these Pokemon, because close combat might be enough damage to KO any of the three, and with no ability to protect against that, you're just picking up a KO, uh really before Dong Hoon can react and trying to extend to the lead. It's the kind of position where once you are ahead, because of, because Fluttermane has spread so much damage so softly, you don't have to take uh, super winning trades, you just have to continue to take even trades and move further ahead. And Dong Hoon has to continue to consider one more unrevealed Pokemon. You know, if it's the Landorus in the back, then you probably need Trick Room to try to fight through this game, because if you continue to trade without it, then you're going to be in trouble. But if it's something like the Incineroar, the Trick Room is a lot less valuable. Um, and so, and it could actually port against you if Ogre Pond ends up in the back. Yeah, this is a tough spot right here for Dong Hoon. Uh, this Urshifu is extremely threatening here, protected by the uh, Amoongus with that Rage Powder, but uh, Urshifu will go for a close combat, gets the KO on Ursaluna there, uh, will take some uh, defense drops because of close combat, but uh, Furgraph now will be able to move. Furgraph will off for Sidekick, will land into that Amoongus because of that Rage Powder and get the KO from that range, but Again, this Urshifu is extremely threatening, carrying that choice scarf. Uh, will be able to get the KO on Ogre Pond for sure. Furgraph could be close in range depending on how it's trained, but again, like you said, Wolf has that one Pokemon in the back, and what it could be could... Well there's no reason to, to overcomplicate it for yeah. Wolf, right? If you know that the close combat can land into Ogre Pond, it doesn't really matter what any of the other right. three Pokemon are. They're all going to be able to 1v1 a 50% health for Giraffe, which means it's right. a very simple end game here for Wolf. Just continue to, to spread damage safely. Never really let Dong Hoon have control of the pace of mm -hmm. the game um, and, and chipped out damage uh, in all of the right Places. Uh, the Amoongus was spent just to keep these attackers safe, right? Used a Rage Powder to take a Flare Blitz away and mean that Fluttermane could spread out damage. Used a second Rage Powder to take a Psychic and mean that more than one of these close combats can land. And it just was uh, too much damage coming in for Dong Hoon to manage with the way that he game planned to this match. Landorus is the last Pokemon on Wolf's side of the field, and you're exactly right, Len. Like, this Furigraph carrying the Citrus Berry going to be more defensively uh, invested here. Uh, it does not have the common, or used to be common, Throat Spray to try to give it a special attack boost whenever it uses Hyper Voice. So uh, this one more of a support for a graph as both players now uh, see, well, I guess Wolf reveals the last Pokemon as we move into just the final turns of this game. Yeah, and I think it's a really interesting construction of four Pokemon for Wolf, right? Just opts for the three biggest attackers on the team, basically with a Moongus to support them with redirection and have some insurance in case Trick Room uh, goes down. Um, it doesn't need the other support options of Incineroar and Tornadus, just continues to have damage presence on the field. Yep, Landers will terrestrialize into the Steel type. Urshifu will use close combat, picking off that Ogre Pond. Again, this Urshifu ha is exerting so much pressure uh, just with carrying that Choice Scarf, making it a very fast Pokemon, but also just being able to hit hard. And here's Landers' Earth Power, hits in that Furigraph. Furigraph will hang on, will eat away at its Citrus Berry, but again, this Furigraph versus these two Pokemon, no match at all. Yeah, I mean, just cannot do it, not set up to do it. I think Dong Hoon is going to have to go back to the drawing board a little bit about how to deal with the early aggression from Fluttermane. Yep, and there's a one-hit KO from that Furigraph into that Urshifu slot. But again, this Landers over on Wolf's side, just sitting extremely healthy with that terrestrialization at full health with the... Basically, it's... it's yeah, it's just going to hit, hit and attack, and then it's over. Now both players will have to go back and think about how they want to optimize their game plan for game two. Yeah, Dungan is going to have to find a way to deal with the early aggression from Fluttermane. It just spread out damage so easily, um, and, and we softened up uh, enough of Dungan's team that they couldn't fight against the Urshifu and the Landers. And there's not really super clear answers about how you stop that in a second game. The mm -hmm. Pokemon that weren't brought in this game, Raging Bolt, going to fight even worse against a, a Fluttermane on the other side. The Fluttermane could be helpful. You, we, you have to imagine with Dong Hoon having a slower team and Wolf having a faster one, that the Wolf's Fluttermane probably is moving first, but you can at least control the move selection from the Fluttermane on the other side. Well, it might, it might be forced to try to Shadow Ball and fight more directly against the Fluttermane instead of just spreading out Dazzling Gleams, because otherwise it could just get traded back for a Shadow Ball of its own. If you can force a Terrestrialization on the Fluttermane on the other side to not be weak to Shadow Ball, then it opens up options to Fake Out with Incineroar and start disrupting that way. So you might have to be a situation with a little bit of fighting fire with fire and having a Fluttermane also on the field is going to be the best way to just constrain this, this Dazzling Gleam spread that happened uh, in game one. Yep, and taking a look here at the replay, I mean, 
this Flutter main was so crucial in Wolf's game plan. Just throw out damage over onto Dong Hoon's side of the field and allow the Pokemon in the back to kind of just pick up those KOs, right? I mean, this Dazzling Gleam hit that Ogre Pond, was able to even get the KO onto Incineroar, uh, but all this spread damage from this Protosynthesis boosted uh, Flutter main just really just put everything in range for whatever Wolf had in the back, so. Yeah, and part of the success of that was the passive play early on from Dong Hoon. For instance, the switch of Ursaluna into Incineroar on turn two. Incineroar uh, still took a bunch of damage on the switch and didn't immediately change the momento momentum of the game. And Ursaluna ended up having to take a Dazzling Gleam anyway. If you had just taken the Dazzling Gleam on the first turn and traded that damage immediately for a Hyper Voice back into Flutter Main, it would have stopped the onslaught of the attack. Now, you still would have dealt with an Urshifu coming in, but there would have been unrevealed Pokemon. Maybe it's a little bit easier to just fight this in a straightforward way. Uh, and so, Wolf makes a change, uh, has two completely different Pokemon on the field, but actually no change from Dong Hoon, who's willing to commit to the Ursaluna and Ogre Pond once again. Yeah, so no Fluttermain out on the field just yet for Wolf's side of the field. Uh, you know, this could be an opportunity for... Uh, it's not really even an opportunity. I mean, this... this there's fake out support. There's uh, Urshifu on the other side of the field for Wolf to be able to just deal with the uh, Blood Moon Ursuline. But you do have to watch out for a potential follow me from the Ogre Pond, but Ogre Pond will just go ahead and switch out. The yeah, Ogre Pond will switch out. Doesn't want to get uh, chunked by the U-turn on the other side, which would be an option. You can also just fake out the Ursaluna to help block that in. And so instead, it's going to be Incineroar coming in to intimidate the Incineroar on one side, and now a Trastalization. It will be Terra Normal on the Ursaluna Blood Moon. That's going to keep it from being weak to Surging Strikes and amplify the damage of whatever is coming out this turn for Dong It's going to make trades probably pretty positive in his favor. Incineroar on Wolf's side will fake out the Incineroar that has switched in on Dong side. Here's the Surging Strikes from the Urshifu on Wolf's side. Hits into that Ursaluna, but again, because you are, you've already mentioned it, the Terrazzalization was really important there, just so that we'll be able to hang on. And now this Ursaluna will be able to throw out some massive amounts of damage because of that Terrazzalization. It is going to be a Blood Moon right here. Ursaluna just going out on the offensive this turn and gets the one-hit knockout on Incineroar. So big KO right there. Incineroar is a very strong pivot piece on Wolf's team, but again, this Urshifu has locked itself into Surging Strikes right now. We know that it will not be able to get the KO on this Ursaluna because of it, as well as Dong Hoon having better position because of this fake out support. Yeah, the fake out support I think is pretty crucial on this turn. It can mean that with Urshifu unable to protect itself, you can put a fake out and a hyper voice down and deal a lot of damage. Um, does have to watch out that the, Ursh the Ursaluna mate is probably low enough to just go down to a moon boss, which kind of disrupts any plan you have from, uh, of continuing this offense. You can't fake out the the Flutter main to stop it, and Urshifu can just aim a Surging Strikes at the Incineroar on the other side and really back put any option for Dong Hoon. It starts to look like one trade is really good. You get rid of the Incineroar, but now the Ursaluna is forced to switch. Can continue the offense, and you're worried about trying to catch Surging Strikes somewhere. It's the Ogre Pond coming into the slot next to Incineroar. Ogre Pond will take the field for Dong Hoon. Wolf will Terrasalize this turn. It is going to be the Flutter main here, going to Terrasalize into the Fairy type, so... Uh, you know, Fluttermane just trying to go all on the all out here, uh, getting Protosynthesis boost, getting this Terra boost as well. Urshifu uses Surging Strikes into that Incineroar slot, so not targeting down that first Luna slot. Uh, so Incineroar will fall to the third Surging Strike here, and well, this Ogre Pond is going to be very vulnerable right now to whatever this Fluttermane wants to deal to it. So here comes Fluttermane. Getting for a Dazzling Gleam, that is going to be a full power Dazzling Gleam. No uh, reduced damage because it is a spread move, and Ogre Pond does, takes a lot from that. Yeah, just a ton of damage, and once again, we're in a situation where Wolf just found the right damage output to, to make things impossible for Dong Hoon. That Dazzling Gleam boosted by Trastalization would have KO'd the Ursaluna, which meant it couldn't stay on the field, but Incineroar couldn't do anything to stop the Surging Strikes coming in. No Trastalization available to save it, no Citrus Berry to help, and so it just goes down. And meanwhile, because Dong Hoon tries to preserve the Ursaluna, the the Ogre Pond pays such a high price and is now too low to take a Dazzling Gleam of its own, which means that you both have a Dazzling Gleam and a Surging Strikes going into Flutter Main next to it. Uh, it's, uh, or to the Furgraph, excuse me, next to it. An almost impossible situation. Furgraph can probably hang on through those moves. You could try to get a Trick Room, try to make one uh, bigger fight, but you have to imagine this last Pokemon is probably the Amoongus, and there it is. Yep, Amoongus will take the field here for that Urshifu. An option for Dong Hoon was to go for the Follow Me, heal back up, take that Surging Strikes, and then allow Furgraph to set up Trick Room, but hey, 
Blade. And what's a great trick from Counterlen? Amoongus over on the other side. Fluttermane uses Dazzling Gleam here, will get the KO on Ogre Pond and chunk away at Ferrigarath, bringing it to a little over 50% of its hit points. But Ferrigarath will be able to move here and it will opt to set up Trick Room. So, uh, Wolf had to switch out that Urshifu and it just so happens it's that Amoongus in the back. So that Amoongus sitting pretty in Trick Room right now as Ursuline will take the field. Yeah, really controlling the pace of this game. If we're right about the speed relationship between Amoongus and this Ursaluna, it's a lot harder to take advantage of this trick room because the Spore can just aim at that direction. Furiraf cannot deal with Amoongus in one turn and is also slower than Amoongus itself. So even the second Psychic would happen after the second Spore, even if you're able to protect the first. But for now, Amoongus doesn't even need to go on the offense with Spore. Fluttermane bulky enough to also just try to get through this turn uh, and attack itself, or it could just be a double protect. Lots of protects coming all around. We get that speed relationship revealed. Amoongus does protect itself before the Ursaluna, which protects this before the Flutter main, and Furgraph left the only thing attacking this turn. Yeah, so Furgraph will attack into that Amoongus slot, wants to chunk away at it with Psychic as a round of protects for everybody but that Furgraph. So now here we go. That's a crucial protect, you know, prediction for Wolf, right? Because he burns the protect on the Ursaluna on the other side, doesn't even have to take a Psychic on the turn, and now is able to just spore the Ursaluna and keep it from attacking. You have to imagine that will mean it never attacks, because a Dazzling Gleam is going to come out at the end of this turn, and Furgraph is not going to be able to stop it. Yeah, Furgraph uses Psychic here, wants to try to hit at this Fluttermane, but Fluttermane, especially bulky, doesn't take that much at all, and here's another Dazzling Gleam from that Fluttermane. Will get the KO on that Ursaluna, Furgraph hangs on, will be able to eat that Citrus Berry, but again, Wolf has played this masterfully here. Wolf sent in that Amoongus and just took advantage of these Trick Room turns, as well as that Protect that you had mentioned. Yeah, the game plan is just so smart to use uh, early offense to chip things down and to use Amoongus to make sure that Trick Room is not a winning play. This is not the kind of hard Trick Room team like we saw from Ben in the previous round. They can deal with Amoongus by having something even slower and torqueful and by having multiple Trick Room attackers. Instead, it's just the Ursaluna